I'm Colin Gallagher from Wakeup. Um, we are the data platform for AI, and I'm here to talk to you about how that context that Dave set is really created a bunch of challenges for people who are implementing AI in production. Over the last decade or so, we've really seen a transition in AI where it's gone from artisanal projects in, in locations in certain departments to really being deployed at scale in the enterprise. Um, however, there are a set of challenges that, that you, uh, you all are facing as you try and build and, and, and manage these deployments. Um, but first I wanna step back and talk about, we call ourselves the data platform for AI. What do we mean by that? Um, we have a couple different key criteria that we think defines the data platform. And yes, I know everybody is calling their product data platform right now. It is in the zeitgeist. Um, however, um, you know, it's very different from taking something that's a legacy giant box and calling it a data platform and trying to shove it into a cloud. Uh, um, um, as, as Dave mentioned, you know, we were, we were rethought from the ground up for these modern workloads. And we really believe we are a true data platform. We give you ubiquitous access to all of your data anytime, anywhere, over any protocol. And it's the same copy of the data across all those protocols. It is the same code base, whether you run it on-prem, in the cloud, at the edge, or in a hybrid environment. We give you unlimited linear scale across all of those deployments. Um, we also have zero tuning support for all different types of workloads. So traditional storage arrays have been generally optimized for one type of workload or the other. And you have to have multiple different ones to service different workloads properly. Not the case with the data platform. It handles all of your workloads ubiquitously. And lastly, it has to be affordable and, and, and easier for you to deploy. Um, I'm a marketing guy. Um, we like to think about data pipelines as something that's very simple and easy. We've, I've been creating these slides for about five years now. Um, yes, these data pipelines serve a wide variety of applications, e-commerce, autopilot, um, manufacturing, HR, life sciences, you name it. But, um, and each data pipeline has a series of steps within it, um, ingesting the data, transforming it, normalizing it, training that data, um, um, validating that data, running inference on it, and then archiving it in case you need to use it again. This is a great marketing slide. This does not represent reality, right? First of all, these steps are iterative. You may get down to the validation process and realize you need to go back and retrain the data. Um, you may get to the inference stage and do the same thing. You may get to the archival stage and then actually need to use that data to rerun the models again. When train a model on data you, you had um, so, um, developed last year, um, you may need to retrieve that data for legal or compliance purposes, right? So in reality, these data pipelines look more like this. Um, and yes, I'm, as I'm avoiding the cyclic portion, right? Between each of these steps, there are different requirements for the data. Each of the steps may have different input types, different protocols that the data is being written to or written with. It may also have different performance profiles. You may have small files that require fast access with low latency. You may have high bandwidth that you need to serve images um, out of. And each one of these steps traditionally has been dealt in a different way, whether it's a different file system or even different storage type to manage them and each one of these, right? So whether you need, you know, so, and to manage that, you traditionally have to copy data between each one of these steps. And that copying of data introduces complexity, human error, and wasted time. Colin, these data sets can be hundreds of terabytes, potentially petabytes of data. They're actually copying it five times in this process? Yep. We have actually- Who in his right mind would copy five petabytes of data five times? Hold that to the end, because we actually give you examples of customers who were doing this in the past, um, um, moving across, and, and people actually end up doing that, and it wastes time, because you end up having a very inefficient data pipeline as you do those copies, as you move from one stage to the other. Um, that They have to do it, because the performance profiles of, of, the, of each of those steps varies, right? Um, they, they're copying it to special performing storage. They're, they're, they may, to, yeah, yeah. They, they may be do. copying it from, from to, to an HPC cluster. They may be copying up to local storage within the, within the GPU farm. So get faster access to it. And then when and then they need to copy the next data set up and replace it, right? So it becomes a continuous challenge of moving these data copies between them. Now, this is something that we like to call data stalls because you're stalling the entire pipeline while you're moving all this data around, right? Um, and you're creating waste because you're creating multiple copies of these data. So you have to pay for it um, and each of these steps as well. 
what we do with Weka is we provide a single data platform that services all of those steps across them, right? Um, would be ingest, ETL, training, validation, inference, or archival. It is one data pipeline and it is one copy of the data. So something you bring in from S3 in the ingest step stage, we can immediately serve that out to a POSIX client um, for to do your, your training on it if, if necessary. Or you can then serve it out to, back to S3 for an archival storage um, on object storage and tear it out that way. So we'll get more into how this works with a couple of the other presenters, but what we, we solve all these problems, we solve all this moving data. Um, but Ray, you, this is an actual customer environment um, that, you know, that a real, very large customer of ours was doing. And, um, and you see, they were actually moving this data around. They were pulling data in from sensors, storing them on, on NAS storage. They were then copying them over to their HPC cluster. And from that, they were using to feed their, their HPC, um, the GPUs. They then had to move and pull them out to a long-term data lake for temporary storage. And eventually they moved them off to tape service for backup for archival because they needed to be able to use these in case they had um, legal issues, All right? And by the way, they had a DR copy they were maintaining elsewhere in the environment, right? And when I present this slide to customers, this is sort of the Eureka slide. It's like, yes, that's my environment. I'm actually doing all this today to get my AI workloads, um, um, my AI workloads done. Right? And what we do is we provide a single data platform that can service all those workloads, eliminate all the copying, eliminate all the tuning, because each one of these um, storage configurations needs to be tuned separately to be able to service the different work, the, the performance profiles of each of the workloads. Right? Um, and we, you know, we, Im we eliminate all of that infrastructure cluster, in infrastructure cluster, and we significantly accelerate the data pipeline. There have been a bunch of research studies, and on average, 70% of the work is done of an epoch is done before you even get the data to the GPU. Now, we call ourselves the data platform for AI. We believe that this data platform is highly useful for other workloads as well. Um, we have started out in the data center core. As I mentioned, we also service um, uh, in the cloud. We run incredibly well in AWS today. We're a fully containerized microservices workload that's been running in AWS um, for, for years. We are also looking, as I talked about, to moving into near edge deployments as well. So look for that coming in the future. We have done really, really well with scientific computing and HPC workloads. We're here to talk to you today about what we're doing for AI and data pipelines. Eventually, a, a well-developed data platform can service other uses as well. So look for us down the road also to expand into containers and microservices and DevOps environments. Also down the road to look to do data lakes and other forms of data storage uh, where we can bring traditional value there, we believe as well. And lastly, you know, obviously all a data platform can benefit traditional enterprise workloads um, as needed with a full set of robust capabilities as well. You can have a universal data system. It's impossible. There's too much tuning for specific workloads that need to go on. How is it possible that you can do all these? We, we have yet to see that, honestly. Um, um, again, it depends on how you- Small files. We Large perform blocks, really, really- Small block, okay. random, okay. sequential, right. <laughs> you sound like Dr. Seuss, small files, any files, <laughs> <quick> files. <laughs> but um, but absolutely, it's actually funny. We, you know, I had the same thing when I was interviewing here. I was like, you can't do this all, it has to be tuned. And the answer is, if you develop the architecture right, if you optimize it right, and you have the technology that you have today, I mean, when, storage arrays were developed, they were optimized for writing within an array. You did everything to avoid going out across the array to, to something else, right? You did everything in cache because you didn't avoid going to disk because disk was so slow. The technology we have today with flash drives, NVMe, high performance networks, allow us to rethink that paradigm and really focus. And so if you develop the architecture right, which Mona's gonna talk to you about in a second, you can actually service small file, large files, any files, no files. So how, how much more can I paraphrase Dr. Seuss, right? In a highly efficient manner. Um, um, and, but, and, but again, and, and yes, yes, this is a, a utopian vision, but you have to set out a utopian vision if you can try and achieve it. And what we've seen is we do have database customers who are running database workloads on their Weka platform and running them really, really well. We have, you know, it wasn't what we originally sold it to them for. We sold it for, for these problems, but they decided to put it on there and, and run as well. So yes, it works. You know, um, pro there are probably other capabilities we need to build out to fully develop this ecosystem. And we recognize that, but we believe that the technology has great, great um, transformative power to enable a whole different type of, of data management in the enterprise 